welcome, welcome. Today I have four amazing uh, polka dot members who are also part of Diamond membership. They are all experts in their field and they're here today to share their top tips of mastering follow-up. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, with Carol Williams. Do you mind introducing yourself, Carol? Well, I would absolutely love it. So I am over in the Northeast corner of the United States in a place called New Hampshire. Some of you may know it. And um, let's see, so regarding my business, this is what I'll say, you know those entrepreneurs that are kind of scattered and like all over the place, they're doing a lot of stuff, they're not making a lot of money, but they're really super busy and they're kind of getting exhausted. Well, I help those folks, I support them in becoming more focused, organized and productive. Um, and my, uh, my business is all around that or all around getting unscattered. So that's my business. Um, and then this is where I say uh, the third thing, right? So I wanted to, so there was a question around why did we um, join Diamond? And I was like, oh God, what am I going to say? But then I came up with something really cool because this is just how the universe works, right? So I had to think, well, why did I join Diamond? And I had to remember like, Oh yeah, there was a reason. And the reason actually I nailed it down was because I didn't know how to do something. And what I didn't know how to do is, um, and I remember Katrina, she's on this call. Like uh, she actually helped me. A lot of people helped me, but I was like, what do I do? How do I do this? And I had this vision that was um, the beacon of light center. And, but I didn't know what to do with it. So, so what was really helpful was to uh, have that as a jumping off point. Um, and I could just connect with people based on this one problem that I was trying to, to solve. And it got me places. It helped me connect with other people, learn a little bit about myself, test things out with all these people who are really expert in their field. And this is a little celebration. We love to celebrate as, as polka dot, right? Actually, um, I'm super duper proud to say that just Less than a month ago, I created uh, the Beacon of Light Center LLC. So I'm really excited. And I just sent out an email probably two weeks ago saying that that's me now and we're going to be like transitioning. And so when you asked me what my business was or you said introduce yourself, uh, including your business, um, it's still the same concept, right? But but the name of it is going to be under under the brand of or the umbrella of Beacon of Light Center LLC. Because while I help people with those things as tactics, what I'm really doing is I'm helping. I'm a beacon of light in the darkness, and uh, and so that's what that is. That's kind of long, I guess, but I wanted to tie that all together. So um, that's what I got. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Carol. And you're right. Polka dot is about celebrating and I love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Wendy Lawson, you are next on my screen. Do you mind sharing? Uh, yes, I mind. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Hello. I am. Uh, I'm Wendy. It's not a typo. Wendy, like the weather. Wendy Lawson coming to you from sunny slash thundery uh, Florida. This afternoon, I am the I'm the founder of sounds so fancy when I say it like that, the founder of the 90 day slay. Um, I'm also the sole employee of the 90 day slay unless you count my cat and two dog no my dog and two cats. Uh, but yes, I found I'm, I'm the founder of the 90 day slay which is a framework. So it's sort of a, a it's a tool and a system um, designed to help people set goals, set and slay the right goals and kind of keep them on the right track. Um, I have been a Diamond member for two years and I will never leave. I love it. Um, I will say one of the one of the reasons that I feel so strongly about Diamond membership is to Carol's point, um, my, my mastermind, my small group mastermind that I've had through Diamond, that I met through Diamond and, and joined through Diamond has really been in a lot of ways, my business board of directors, right? My personal board of directors um, and really kind of hold my hand and help me with developing these systems. And one of the systems we're gonna talk about today is, is follow-up because if you have a business, if you wanna have a successful business, you gotta keep in touch with your peoples. Um, so I'm really, really passionate about that. And 
I think that's all I need to share with you at this time. Awesome. Thanks, Wendy. Okay, Audrey, you are next on my screen. Absolutely. Hi, everybody. Um, Audrey Kirshner. I am the co-founder and chief marketing strategist at Incoma. Um, so, Wendy, you're not the only one with a little fappy title. Um, really, what that means is we are a marketing agency. I've had the agency for 12 years now. And before I went out on my own, I worked for over 20 years in marketing at Fortune 500 and agencies in New York City, um, all that good stuff. Um, so I've been doing it a long time and I really love it. Um, I think one of the most things I enjoy is when I uh, meet a new business owner, we put their campaigns in place and we meet and they say, hey, I got this new account. I got this new client. I just made X this month. That is what gets me up in the morning um, and keeps me jazzed along with my cups of coffee. Um, I'm in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Um, we are new transplants here. We love it. Um, plan on never leaving if, if we're lucky. And I am a fairly new dot. Um, I joined a couple months ago. And one of the first things I did after becoming a dot is I became a diamond because I looked at what um, is offered and there's so much there. And I've already gotten so much out of it in the few months I've been in. Um, have to echo what Wendy is saying. I love my mastermind group. I've already got topics that I wanna to talk to them about on Monday um, because we help each other and we work through things. Um, so it's really supportive. And I've been looking for a mastermind group for a very, very long time. So this just fit, fit me perfectly. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you. Katrina, you are next. Hey everyone, um, I'm Katrina Sawa. I'm in Northern California near Sacramento and I have been a diamond for almost four years now um, and PDP, but I jumped right into diamond right away too because I'm all about um, business really. And so I love the connection part of PDP, but I also just love to get to business and see how we can help each other. So I jumped right in and um, I love the masterminds as well. I'm not always a part of them. Um, I usually lead them because I want them at the time I want to do it. <laughs> kind of a, a control person like that. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I've been in a lot of masterminds and I can say that this group is where I could be my most vulnerable but I also get just a ton of clients from it too. And so it's a win-win and I love it. Um, in my business, I am a business coach. I've been doing this for 20 years now this year and uh, this August. Oh my gosh, it's August is my anniversary. And I love helping people make more money. I am constantly finding ways to be more efficient, more productive, more profitable, stop working so hard, put systems in place. Um, more tech, more team, um, up-leveling your mindset so you can charge like 10, 20, $40,000. I don't care. I want you to charge as much as you can say without stuttering. And um, I want you to have as many clients and build the business around the kind of life you want to live rather than fit your life in around your business. So it's so important. People think I work all the time. I don't. I have a great team and great systems. Um, I also have a publishing company. So I help people with books and I have um, the International Speaker Network, which has a con conference coming up in a week and a half. And uh, yeah, I do a lot. I love it. Love that. And, and surround, you've, you've focused on surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals, oh, yeah. right? We're gonna yeah, get rid of toxic people altogether. Like if anybody's negative naysay or Nelly, I'm like, nah, next. Right. right, yeah. Life well, is too short. Right. And for me, that's what Diamond, for, for me as a regional support director, Diamond membership has given me that space. Number one, to be surrounded by the top 10%, those individuals who will continue to push me out of my comfort zone. And you need that as a leader sometimes, right? Otherwise you kind of, you can become comfortable, too comfortable. So I'm, I'm consistently working to become better. All right. Now we're going to get into the meat of the whole thing. Why you're here? Why our why our attendees are here today? Um, and I'd like to start by asking our panelists, why has follow up been so important for you in your business, your specific business? So Carol, I'm going to start with you. What do you? What can you share with us? So I have been in business for myself since '09. And I have had a lot of um, turmoil during the beginning. And, uh, you know, I won't go through all that, 
But what I will say is that uh, starting starting off and being consistent, you know, it's hard. And and even even when you're not just starting off, there's a lot. I find that there's a lot of resistance. I had resistance to to like getting a CRM system and really taking that those moments to just say, okay, I'm gonna put this in my system. I was just running, running, running. I used to, Ronnie might know this cause uh, you know, she and I are both in the same um, community uh, outside of Polka Dots. Um, with my CRM system, I, I used to say that my business was put together with spitballs and duct tape, which it was. So, um, and, but once I, realized that I needed to have a system and the more I used it um, and I had to basically just about go broke before I finally gave it up and just did it. Um, now it's, it's easy. Cause it's like Katrina said, it's, it, you're just, it's on, it's on autopilot. Cause it's, but it does take a while. So why is it important to me is cause I actually wouldn't have a business without it. Um, and, and I, it, my business is is flourishing, uh, profitable, fun, and uh, all, all that. So why is it important? That's why it's important. And why it's important for the people I serve, go back to my original thing I said, is because my people I serve are scattered, right? So, <laughs> so that's why it's so important is because they might, they might think that they're neurodiverse. They might have ADHD or they might just plain old just be doing too many things at once. So that's why it's important. Love it. Love it. Thank you. And, and isn't it interesting how you get going in your business day to day? And I, I'm, I hope that this has caused our panelists to like, wow, like I see where I was and where I'm at now and how important it is and that why. I love it. Love it. Love it, Carol. Wendy, what do you have for us? Well, I have to tell you, when Carol said she put it together with spitballs and I don't know, she MacGyvered her system, whatever it was, Carol, I think that's the universal, um, I think every entrepreneur, like that is their first, that's their first system is like, let me take a piece of this and a chunk of this and let me see if I can do this and I'll put a trip, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to tie this with straight, like I'm going to put these two soup cans together. It's because we don't know till we know. Right. And so we, uh, I think a lot of times it's the, when we're just starting out, we're afraid to make that big investment, particularly in software or software as a service. And so it's, how can I do this on the cheap? How can I do this for free? And so, um, you stuck with it. So I think that's amazing. Um, and that you, you know, that it had how much it's impacted you and you say, I have a business because of my follow-up. I will tell you, I personally, you know, follow-up to me is, um, it's just good service. And it's just, it's just who my grandma would want me to be. You know what I'm saying? It's just, that's the kind of person I want to be. That's the kind of service I want to provide, whether you're a customer or not. Right. So it's not just, when we're talking about follow-up. It's not just, um, with leads who haven't done business prospects. I mean, we're talking about like after the sale, when you're in fulfillment phase and even after the onboarding or the offboarding rather, and now you're still nurturing relationships. Like there's, there's so much to follow up. It's not just to close the sale. Um, so I, you know, I think for me, it, it's important because it's just who I want to be and how I want to show up in my business, but really how it's impacted my business is, uh, you know, honestly, I mean, it's clients, right. It's getting clients because I don't know about you ladies, probably everybody on this call has their lives completely together and nothing has ever fallen through the cracks for you, right? Like you get an email and you're like, oh yes, I'm going to respond to this right now. You never forget. Um, but my clients, sometimes they forget. They forget to respond to the email. They forget to buy the course. They forget to do the things. And so the follow-up helps to remind them <laughs> of what they want to do. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I love it, Wendy. Love it. Audrey, what are you, what, why is it important for you and your business? Um, so I love what Wendy said about, you know, I want, I want my grandma to be proud of, of, of how I follow up. And that's, that's one of the biggest sentiments for me is being authentic. I, I always say, you know, if I say I'm going to do something, I have to do it, right? That is, that's it. 
that's the key to success. Um, but sometimes stuff gets in the way, like families and dogs and, oh, you get tired or you can't find your cup of coffee. Um, so being consistent, like Carol said, is huge, right? Getting into routines. But I, I also um, look at it from the other perspective of growing the business where people need to see you and they need to be aware of you. And the only way to do that is if you follow up. You say, hey, every once in a while to existing customers, or if they ask a question. Um, so, you know, in the beginning, I was doing that all manually. Um, but now I have systems in place. I have automation to do a lot of the um, repetitive stuff so that then I can focus up on the detailed follow-up that needs my brain power. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully not let anything fall through the cracks. But I find that that follow-up, I hear from clients all the time, like, you know, I stay with you, I work with you because you genuinely care about my company. Like I care about my company. And that's what I like to hear. And it's, and really, I think all of that is because of follow-up. Yep. They feel heard, seen, and that they matter, right? Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Love that. Love it. Katrina, what do you have? What, what, what is, what is your why? Well, for me, I've been in sales and marketing jobs all my life since 16, okay? And so making the sale, like Wendy said, required follow-up and lots of it. And it used to be, you know, you used to have seven or eight touches to make a sale, et cetera. Now it's more like 28 touches because people are too busy. They don't see most of the touches that you do. Um, but when I started my business in this business, it was local, mostly local because there was no Zoom. There was no social media. Okay. And so it was run around town to the local networking events and meet as many people as possible and then have a system for follow-up. Follow-up to me was phone calls, emails, and direct mail at the time. And direct mail, frankly, I'll talk about that more later, but it is the key that for anything now. And so, but so the follow-up became the nurturing. I was very consultative in my sales strategy. So I would always like explain everything in detail and tell people other things. And, and then because I did so much, they would love and buy from me. Right. And so that's just how I am. And so I would do that. I would do that in the follow-up. I would connect people. I would send them stuff. I would send them articles. I would, you know, so it's just nurturing, building relationship. But these days you have to make it more automated. You have to, you can even delegate a lot of the follow-up you guys, and it can still be very personal. So don't be afraid to delegate and don't be afraid to hire someone to help you because it makes you more money. It will guaranteed make you more money. Awesome. I love it. Okay. I am ready. I am so excited <laughs> to hear what, what your, all of your top tips are. So Carol, what is your number one top tip that you would like to share with everyone here today? My number one, oh my God, I don't know which one. I'd say do it immediately. Like don't waste any time because we're in an immediate world, you know? So that's my top one. Just, just don't waste any time. You can, I'll just expand on that for two seconds. And that is, is you can um, be ready ahead of time. So like you can, pr like to, to Katrina's point, you can have it automated. So, uh, you know, you're in a meeting and you know you want to send a thank you, you can have a template and you can go in and tweak it a little bit, uh, put a couple of points in there that you talked about and hit the send button or have your assistant hit the send button. And people are like, whoa, you know, and, and right. So, so I think immediately would be my first uh, tip. And have the plan, right? Have the and plan have the place. Plan. Right. Don't, don't do it like I used to do it, which was I used to just go to meetings, collect a lot of cards, get back, get to them later, whenever later was, which was almost never. Okay. That's the, the polar opposite of what you want to do. Do it immediately. Mm -hmm. That's what I got. I love it. I love it. Wendy, what is your top tip? Can you tell I'm about to talk and then I'm like, oh, I'm <laughs> muted. So I'm like this. Um, okay. My top tip, this is, this is particularly for people who are follow-up anxious, who have the mentality of like, oh, I don't want to follow up. If they wanted to hear from me, they would call me. Okay. If that, if you find yourself saying like, I don't like doing follow-up because it feels 
spammy. It feels gross. It feels, here's what I want you to understand. I want you to change your mentality and change your mindset to realize that follow-up is about providing service and that's it. It's service. You would not, you don't get annoyed with the waitress for coming and asking if you need a refill. That's the same thing that you're doing when you're reaching out to your customers um, or even prospects. You're reminding them of like, how can I serve you? I am here to serve you. And I will, I will continue to try to serve you until you die or I die. <laughs> like, or you tell me go away. Like, I don't want to hear from you anymore. Right. I really am because it really is about providing services about providing it's helping your people. Mm -hmm. It's helping the people that need your service. And so if you can really look at it that way and say, okay, you know what? Yeah. If they don't want to hear from you, they will opt out. They will tell you, right. They will hang up or they will do whatever they'll unsubscribe. But if they haven't done that, then keep following up with them and recognize that really it's about, you're not trying to sell them because your whatever product or service you have is a good one and it can help them. Right. So it's not sales isn't gross. You're trying to help them to serve them. And if you can really feel that, then follow up becomes so much easier. It is the mindset. I love that. Love it. Love it. Audrey, what's your top tip? So um, I'm a big fan of automation. I know everybody's been kind of talking about it. So my first one is like base level automation. So if you're new to it, um, when I was new to it many, many, many years ago, you start simple and you build on top of it. And so what we've created is a welcome email series that we do through our CRM system. And so if I'm at a meeting, even you know Zoom in person, have conversations, collect email addresses or collect those cards, I just simply put their information into the system and it kicks off the uh, automation series. And it's a series of two emails. Hey, you know, we just connected. So glad to talk to you. Um, and that goes out. And then I have another one scheduled. Um, I think it's like five days later that goes, hey, you know, I had, I wrote, we do a lot of um, content creation here, a lot of educational material. And so I send out one of our, our best articles that people just love. And I say, hey, you know, um, a lot of business owners like this, they found this helpful. I hope you find it helpful too. And then we put them into our uh, bi-monthly newsletter series um, so that they're constantly getting uh, marketing education throughout the month until like Wendy said, they unsubscribe, right? If they want it, they keep it. If they don't, then they unsubscribe and the system just takes care of it. Um, and then as part of that, there's call outs in all of those emails like um, to schedule time to talk. And if they do that, then I kick in and I get into personal mode where then we meet, connect and talk more about whatever it is that they need to talk about. Um, so that is my first tip is if you wanna start small with automation, that's probably your most simplest thing to do. And it's like that one and done thing. You've created it, right? It's, it's those yeah. ten, it's that series and, it's, it's, and you plug it in. Right. And then it's as simple as adding an email address to your CRM system and then it takes over. Yep. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Katrina, what's your top tip? Yeah. So uh, love the email automation. I would say that, um, you have to do that, but you really need to do direct mail. And so many people got away from doing direct mail when the emails got more popular and it was easier to do that kind of stuff. And they didn't have to talk to anybody or connect or do extra labor or spend extra money on a stamp. And then when social media came around, really everybody stopped doing direct mail, which I think is the biggest mistake ever. I still do it to this day. I send out note cards when I have new people that give me their mailing address, pre-written stuff inside. My assistant signs it. It looks like me, but you know, I'm just saying. Event announcements, holiday cards. I know you know what I'm talking about, Mindy, right? With uh, services like this that you have that you can do, sending out promotional materials and books. I give away free books, you guys. I send those in the mail. Do you think someone's going to work with me if I give them a free book? That cost me like five bucks to get printed and send in the mail. Yes. So please embrace direct mail and figure out some way, somehow to touch everybody. Now, the challenge is usually you're just getting the name and email address, right? So you have to come up with creative ways to get the mailing address and the phone number. You need to call them too. 
by the way. So you can't just add them to an email list and assume they're seeing your emails. You have to actually call and say, hey, my email might be in your spam. Did you get it? Like you, you have to do these extra steps. I don't care if it takes time, but it's so important. I'd rather have less people I'm connecting with and do in-depth connection than try to just automate everything and hope and pray that people are seeing it. Yep, yep. I love it. Love it. Great. Okay. Tip number number two, Carol, do you have one lined up that you're ready to share? I do, and I'm going to switch it. So I'll tell you okay. the, tell you what number two was. You have to continue to nurture them. I kind of feel like we've covered that. Um, what I'll say about it, though, is something I think that Audrey said was that if, um, if they are no longer interested, it's okay. They'll unsubscribe. We sometimes think we're bugging people. So, um, so we don't do it, but you have to be, door has to be open. Here's, here's the real one I think I'm gonna say, and not so different than um, what you said, Katrina, about you, your direct mail is well taken. That point is well taken. I want to drill into what I see a lot in the world of Polkadot. And I know not everybody here is in Polkadot. And that is, is that people, don't even have an email list. They just live on social media and feel like that that's cool. They're, they're, they've covered themselves. And I feel like that is a very wrong decision for so many reasons. Number one, you are at, your, your words are on somebody else's platform. Bad idea. Um, number, number two, you have no well, I'm, I think there are ways because I do know of a couple of like tools, but by and large integrated, there's no integrated way that you can take somebody from, hey, I'm kind of interested and put them through your pipeline. So you have to, at the very least, even though email is over, overdone, at the very least, get yourself a MailChimp, a constant contact or whatever service you want to have. Even if you don't have a full-blown a CRM when you first start something so that so that you're you, you're building a relationship ideally you're building a relationship with the person and that's how to consider it it's not spam it's a relationship absolutely I love it and and a presence right that presence absolutely love that we all experienced that what a couple of years ago when Facebook went down and there were several people that totally like panicked and thought oh my gosh now you know i how do i reach my peeps facebook is closed down and that was that was the that for me was the ding 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 of polka dot powerhouse the value of our website because facebook went down but we could still go to the go to the login on the website and you had access to every single polka dot member there was right so that that was a big, that was a big eye opener for all of us. So I, I agree totally. Wendy, what do you have? Yeah, I, um, Carol, I'm so, I'm so glad you flipped whatever you were going to say and to talk about that, because that is, that's very important. And I think you're right. I do see a lot of people that rely on Facebook messenger or Instagram DMs or wherever. So, um, good, good call there. Um, uh, the second tip that I had, um, uh, really is in this kind of piggybacks off what Carol and Audrey were saying earlier is you really, even when you're starting out and it's small and you think like, I'll remember, I'll remember, you won't remember, like you cannot rely on your memory to, oh, I met Carol at this polka dot meeting and she was kind of cool. And then I wanted to talk to her. And so I put a flag over here that I'm going to follow up with her on this. And then two, no, like your, your brain, your brain is beautiful, but it's got other things going on. Like you can't trust that it's going to remember that you want to follow up with Carol to talk about her beautiful flowered shirt. Um, so really you just cannot rely on your memory. And that's really going back to coming up with a system, right? It doesn't have to be a full blown fancy pants CRM. Um, but you've got to have some sort of system. You've got to have something that you can utilize so that you can have space in your brain to do the other things that it wants to do for your business. Love it. Love it. Systems. Love it. Audrey. Um, so I just, I, I feel a very strong need to follow up on what Carol said about social media. You don't own the platform. 
Um, and so, yeah, Facebook went down, but the other thing Facebook does, and it's documented because it happened to me in January, is they randomly disable accounts. Their bots randomly disable accounts. There's no evil human behind it, but their software is flawed. And I actually had an account that was down for six months and it's part of my business. I do social media marketing for other companies. When I would tell you I was panicked. <laughs> um, yeah, so don't rely all of your business in, in one place like social media. I did a whole podcast epi episode on how Facebook disabled me and how I got it back. It's entertaining. Um, if you want to take a listen to it, um, just to kind of drive that home for anybody who's like, you know, at least with your CRM systems and your website, they're your own assets, you know, MailChimp, constant contact, unless you stop paying your bill, those guys are not going to shut you down. Right. Or unless you violate, like really violate their policies. Um, so my next tip is kind of along that vein of social media and, you know, you don't own your followers, you don't have their information. One of the platforms that, that you can actually extract some of that platform information is LinkedIn. So a lot of us are B2B and LinkedIn is actually, they're fairly okay, right? Their reach rates, just like everybody else is one to 2%. But their messaging system is um, really great, right? So if you connect with someone and you're messaging with them, but you can actually automate that. There's a really cool tool. It's called Linked Builder. And it allows you to automate some of that messaging. So let's say you're running a fabulous event and you want to send stuff out to everybody that's following you on LinkedIn. You can send them all a message through there. Um, you have to be already connected. And it's you can do it with your free account. Um, the other thing within the tool is that if it's available, it will allow you to download their contact information, name, address, email, telephone number, um, and then you can pull it into your other system so you don't ever lose it. So that's my next tip is don't think that um, you can't extract some of that stuff from the social accounts. You just got to kind of know how to do it. Love it. Love it. Great tip. Katrina. Okay, so I know we've, I've talked a little bit about this, but you have to follow up more than you think you need to. Like Wendy was saying earlier, 28 touches. I say in more of a condensed amount of time though. Don't stretch that out over six months, please. Because people will forget about you in 30 days. So you have to get them quick. Because don't you forget like who you met? Like we're on so many Zoom calls, we're on events and stuff like that, right? I mean, like you could meet hundreds of people in a week and then three weeks from now, someone could send you a message on LinkedIn and go, oh, hey, I wanted to reach out to you. And you're like, do I know this person? Did I mean, like, so in a condensed period of time is when you want to do the majority of your follow-up. So most of my follow-up I do after a speaking gig or a networking event, in person or virtual. And so it, it needs to be done right away. In person, I will tell you part of the systems that I created were these little sheet sheets that people fill out. You know how when you have a vendor booth or even if you're at an event, you can have a little slip that people fill out because their business cards don't always have their address on them and we need the address, right? And we need the phone number, we need the email. And what's really cool is like on the bottom of the cheat sheet, I have all the different things that I do with clients and people check mark, look, these per person checked three of them. So I know when I follow up with that person, I'll be like, well, you were interested in either a new website or tech help and a free consult and some delegating and hiring information. So let's talk about that. So then I don't have to remember all those little things. They filled this out. And so we have to do this on our online forms too. So you can do that, get more information and just follow up accordingly, but more con in a more condensed period of time is what I would say. Love that. Stay top of mind because there's lots of shiny objects. And if you're not right there top yeah. of mind, great. Too. Once they kind of know who you were and they connect the dots, then they won't forget again, right? But if you wait too long to follow up, then you have to really refresh their memory as to where you met. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Okay. I think we have time for one last tip from each one of you, and then we're going to open it up to Q&A. So Carol, what's your last, last big tip that you'd like to share? Okay. My last one is don't take it personally when they don't email you back, mm -hmm. I guess. That's a mindset thing. And I was thinking about um, when Katrina just talked about condensing. I'm going to sort of add a bonus on my, because that's a short tip. So my bonus is think ahead. So plan it ahead. Like, okay, I'm going to this event. 
here's what I'm going to do before, here's what I'm going to do after. This is something I never did. I never thought about the bigger part. It's not just the event. And what am I going to? You know, we're all over, over emailed, over worked, over stretched, over booked, over, over. And what if you just said, all right, this is what I'm going to do. And this is what I'm, how I'm going to prep. And this is how I'm going to follow up. And because, and when you're so intentional, then automatically um, you're going to show up more powerfully and it's just, it's going to be easier for you. You're not going to feel like this. So to me, that's probably a more powerful tip. Mm, I like that. Have the mindset, know that clarity on why are you going to this event and what are you hoping yeah. to receive from that and have mm -hmm. a plan in place? That's huge. Love it. Wendy, what do you got? I, uh, I love, yeah, I love, Ke it's so fun coming right after Carol. Cause I'm like, everything she says, I'm like, yeah, go girl. You go girl. That's right, girl. Um, I, I I'm, I'm getting off script, Mindy, off what I told you I was going to talk about Yay. my third top tip here's because here's something I want to say. And I feel, um, I feel like it's important that I share this with this group. I don't know where this came from. I'm just, y'all, I just feel like this is what I need to tell you the tip that I need to share with you now. Um, before you, you know, when you start really, truly saying, okay, you know what I need, a, I, I came to this panel call. These women were brilliant, obviously. Um, they've got me on board. I'm like, yes, I need a follow-up strategy. So now you're all jazzed up and you're like, okay, I'm going to go get a follow-up. I'm going to do a follow-up strategy. Here's what I want it to look like. Here's the goals. Here's how it's going to help me achieve my goals. And then the next step is you're going to go like, um, okay, what are other people using? And I'm going to go Google CRM systems. And then you're going to see this one has a free price and this one is, so you're going to be, you're going to have, it's, it's a lot. I'm just going to tell you, it's a lot. Okay. It's going to be overwhelming before you decide on any, any CRM, before you decide anything, sit down and think about what you want it to do and really look at your existing systems make sure that it's going to integrate with what you're already using, or you're going to have to change. Cause like the last thing you want to do is get an amazing system that doesn't talk to your other amazing system. And now you have to manually, you have to go in and get Zapier, you know, build a zap or a, um, applet or whatever, like to get things to boom, boom, boom. You don't want that. No. So really, but be intentional with it. Right. Yeah. Um, that's right. Thank you, Katrina. Don't get so caught up with the indecision that you're like, eh, I'm not going to do the follow-up. No, <laughs> no. So that's, that's my next uh, tip. I love it. I love it because we can, right. We can come to a call. Okay. I heard this. And then it's like those squirrels that are crossing in your path again, keeping you from what you're really needing to do. So by yeah. keeping it simple is the most important thing, right? Yeah. Keep it simple, doable, achievable. Love it. Audrey. So Wendy, I laughed when you said, okay, and you Google CRM systems and I giggled because I'm like, oh, you just got fire hosed <laughs> with systems. Um, so yeah, you're, you pick one that is for you. But the other thing I would, I would write on top of that before I get my, to my last tip is when you pick one, realize it's you're dating it. You're not married. It's not, um, you can always switch right? Might be a little extra work, but at some point in the future, if you outgrow it, celebrate that you've outgrown that system and then move on. Um, you can download and upload system um, lists and everything like that. So yeah, pick something and go. Um, so my last tip is, is actually around what Katrina was talking about is more than one touch point, more than two touch points, and then condensing those touch points. Um, and then for those of you that want to research this, um, in, in the marketing world, we call them sales funnels, right? Just a little fancy term that we basically put them in a lane and then put them through things. Um, I use them a lot in my business. I have um, different sales funnels set up for different services. And then to Carol's point, like if you have an event, you can plan out what your whole sales funnel should look like depending on what you're promoting at that event. Um, the key things that I think at least for six of the touch points should be in that sales funnel is what you say to them is really, really important and how you drive them down the lane. It is not six sales emails, right? Nobody wants to get six sales emails. And for those of us that are not salesy, oh, that makes my stomach cringe. Like I can't send six, eight, six sales emails. So just to give you quickly, 
um, what are what we put in those six major ones and then we put other ones in between is we always give them something. Hey, here's a gift from us. Virtual gift asset delivery is what we call it. Um, second, we talk about their problem with respect to our services and the solution that we provide to it. So we talk to them about where they're coming from first and not so much about who we are, right? People, we're all center focused. And if you tell me I can solve this problem you have, I am so much more listening to you. Third one is a customer testimonial. That's social proof. Throw that in there. And if you've got video testimonials, even better. Uh, number four, overcoming objections, right? We've talked to enough people about our products and services. We know what those objections are. So hit them head on, right? We know you have this. This is what we think of that, right? And here's how we solve that objection. One of my favorites is paradigm shift. Having them think about your product or service the way you want them to think about it. Think, Give them something different to think about. Like, hey, this is it. Because when you do that, they're like, wow, I didn't think about that. Wow, they're innovative. Wow, they're, they're really experts. I need to work with these people, right? When, you, when, when I always hear someone say, wow, I didn't think about that that way, or that was a really good question. I'm like, yay. <laughs> um, and then the last one is the traditional sales email. Buy this get this and then special offer type of discount. Um, it's just an, an e so if you're uncomfortable with a traditional sales process and you wanna give more than you ask, um, that's a really good way to do it. And then uh, CRM systems like MailChimp and Constant Contact, the big guys out there, you can actually automate that whole thing again where you put their information in and it sends them out at, re at whatever your regular intervals that you're comfortable with. And then again, if they don't wanna be part of it, they get to opt out, right? And then like, I think it was Carol said, it's like, don't get offended if they opt out, right? You're just not for them right at the moment. That's all. That's right. It's all about the timing and, and offering continue to be visible. I love it. Katrina, what do you have? Love all of this. So I'm so passionate about follow-up. It's ridiculous. I mean, because you leave so much money on the table when you don't do it. Um, I find one of the biggest problems people don't do their follow-up is they don't know what to say. So though we were saying about the words matter. So what do you say in a voicemail if you get their voicemail? What do you say if you get someone live on the phone? What do you say in that first follow-up email? Like Audrey, those are good ideas. I always give free stuff too, right? And I talk about me personally and I try to find out more about them and get them to like email me back with an answer to some, a question, right? We wanna get to know, like, and trust them. Um, we don't wanna say, oh, I have this thing coming up. I thought you might be interested, right? So. But a lot of times you are getting ready to do your follow-up and you're like, I'm not really feeling it. I don't know what to say. And so you don't do it because you set aside block time for an hour to do the thing. And then you just don't know what to say. So my advice would be to get your follow-up written out in a script of some sort. When you're in a marketing mindset, when you're in this mindset to do it, not when you have to do the follow-up. Then you have scripts for the direct mail note cards. You have scripts for the voicemail. You have scripts and pre-written emails that you can then clone and redo and change out where you, I always say where you met them, right? So we used to have a series of three emails after every live event and we would just clone it, change the subject line where you met them, change the where met inside and usually send out the same free gifts, the same everything, you know, if I had to, sometimes I would customize it if I was a speaker or whatever, but developing those scripts and pre-written things when you don't have to do it right now, it'll, you'll be more inspired, I think. Absolutely. I love that. Be, again, it's all in the planning, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it, it's easy to do when you get those steps in place. Love what you ladies are sharing. All right. This is question Q&A time. So who's got a question for our panelists? Just feel free to take yourself off of mute and ask away. This is your time now. Anybody have anything? Someone? All right, I've got a question. So is as, as a follow-up strategist, when I am talking to potential customers who are interested in using Mailbox Power for direct mail marketing, one of the biggest challenges that I hear is they don't clearly know how much to invest in that direct mail marketing. So as experts in your field, what would you recommend? That's not my, my jam is the creativeness, helping them create those things. 
and we have our set programs, but some, they're, the biggest block for them in becoming a customer is they don't know how they don't know how much each of their clients are worth. What is that follow up worth to them? What is that building that relationship? Any of our panelists want to help me out here? Get your I would say that um, you develop you you put into it whatever you need to. I'm sorry, it's going to make you money. So, but you do need to know like is is a client two hundred dollars worth to you? Are they my my clients are worth twenty five to forty thousand dollars for me when someone really works with me for a long period of time? So sending five dollars in the mail or fifteen dollars of a package is not an issue if I know they're a very warm or hot prospect, right? Um, if it's a lower price point for you, first of all, think if you can have a higher price point. Um, otherwise, uh, a note card. You can get some really inexpensive note cards on Vistaprint. These are from Vistaprint, and you, or, or Mailbox Power, which is what Mindy does, right? And but you can have them pre-written, pre-done. Go in and click, click, click. It can cost you fifty to seventy-five cents. And that has got to be worth it, even for a $200 customer. Yeah, so at the very least, please do a note card or card right away, you guys, right away with your picture in it, please. It has to have your picture in it so they can correlate with a picture that looks like what you want, look like right now, <laughs> not like an old picture. Thank you. Love it. <laughs> Uh, Mindy, so, you know, in my former life, I was a chief marketing officer. So converse, when you start asking questions about things like this, I'm like, all right, let me get my spreadsheet. We got budget talks. Let's look at the budget. Um, Come on, Mindy, let's get our pencils going. That's right. That's right. We're going to, we're going to look at the, uh, look at the overall budget. Going to look at the, our outreach budget. Yeah. Oh, Katrina. Katrina's making me twitchy over here with such saucy language. Um, I mean, Mindy, this is, you know, the, the people that are looking at this, they're, they're, they need to really be clear on what their marketing budget is and this falls within it. So I don't know, I don't know what the cost is for these services, but if someone has, you know, a thousand dollar budget for their entire for marketing budget for their entire year, and it's going to cost seven hundred dollars to use this product. Then it's probably you got to you've got you're assuming then that it's going to account for seventy percent of all the sales, right? So it's really just looking at making sure that that budget investment is in alignment with what it's bringing in. So I love it. I, I know that's not an answer you want. Oh no, I am. And it's certainly not an answer with, Katrina wants, right? But I, I always, me being that connector. I also know who are my business coaches. If, if they don't have a plan, then that's who I connect them with. Get that figured out and then come yeah. back to me and know, because I think knowing of having a budget, first of all, knowing like Katrina said, knowing what that client is worth to you, what is their value? If you have a $20,000 client that you're working with, they're, they're, they are going to be your biggest referral right? They're going to be. So a pre showing gratitude, appreciation, staying top of mind with them. Um, yeah, for sure. So me being the connector, but I hear it often so many times, like, well, I don't, that usually stumps them. That's the first question I ask is what is your budget? Um, I don't have a budget. Well, how much are your, what is the value of, of the service that you're offering that they're bringing into you that let's start there. And then I usually refer them on. Audrey, I see you're off of mute. Do you have something? Well, Carol had a question. Carol oh. has been trying to get in there. So Carol, you go first. And then oh, I okay. will add my I, I, Mine okay. hopefully is quick. <laughs> so the rule of thumb that I use per customer for my kind of work is 30 to 40% marketing with every. So if it's a $20,000 client, you know, just it doesn't matter. So it's going to cost me approximately that much money to bring somebody in doing everything. So, you know, do it with, you know, maybe a little bit different if it's a MLM, because I don't know anything about that industry. It's not my jam, but I do know my, my industry and that's the word. And then you have to chop it up from there. So it's not really a direct answer, but it's an indirect answer that is related to Wendy's answer. Well, and it, it, you shared what works for you. And that's important. Again, which, yeah. which is why I brought experts in a diverse field, right? Yeah. So that each of you share what works for you. 
Audrey, did you have something to add and then we'll go to Judith? I, I did really quick. And it's just a follow up because Katrina, Wendy and Carol are all right, right? You got to figure that out. But I think to make us feel good about our expenditure and get us sleeping at night is you got to track if it's working, right? If we're, if we're spending that money and we're getting, you know, a 90% close rate, why would you not spend that money? So make sure that as you're spending that money, track who's signing up and um, if, and anecdotally, wow, I love the mug you sent me. That was so awesome. Um, and then it's going to encourage you to keep with it and spend it more and realize that it's worth it. That's, that's where the rubber meets the road is the spend worth it. I love it. Love it. Judith. Yeah, I'm curious about the LinkedIn builder um, option that came up, because I remember when LinkedIn first arrived, it said, you're not supposed to market to people, right? So how does the LinkedIn builder bypass that message? It actually doesn't bypass. What it does is automate what we would do as human beings, putting fingers on the keyboard. So you will create a message and you will segment the audience that is following you, meaning they've given you permission to be connected to that um, and send them messages. If you decide to upgrade to a sales navigator level um, account on LinkedIn, which I think is something like $80 per month, you are they actually give you a certain percentage of people that you can actually message to that you're not connected to. Oh. So yeah, they're little, they're little, the rules are a little gray, <laughs> even when you pay them, then you can reach out and message people that you're not connected to um, within that. And they only give you so many credits for that per month. But I, if, if, if LinkedIn is where you're at and it's your jam, do the sales navigator, get those free ones, focus on getting them into your list, and then you can mail them as you go, because they do have the ability to opt out of your messaging if they choose to inside of LinkedIn. LinkedIn's using their messaging system almost like a CRM system. Cool, because that's where I'm actually getting my surprise visitors that I didn't hustle. Yeah. They're showing up from HR departments globally. Oh, yeah. So yeah, the, um, yeah. yeah. And then you can actually focus your messaging on HR people because that's one of the categories that you can search by is a, when you have the sales navigator um, level uh, count with them. That's so helpful. that $80 a month might be worth it for you. Thank you. That's helpful. Uh, oh, is she frozen? Oh, there. Wait. Okay. I am frozen. I, I hope I, you can hear me. I might take yeah. my video off. I You're good. This might happen. Um, before we end this call or before I lose you all, I would love for the ladies, our panelists, to please put your, your contact information in, some links in. If someone has said something today that, that you're like, oh, I want to know more information about that. I want to connect with that person, learn more. How did she, how did she do whatever? Um, so panelists, if you'll put your information, I encourage you to reach out. Um, does anybody have, else have a question before I get kicked off here? <laughs> Any other questions? Heidi? Oh, you're back on mute, Heidi. There I just wanted to say thank you. I have a very unique business. So bits and pieces of this is, are really going to help me. Awesome. Awesome. And that's, that is the, that's the reason, my reason why I put this together, because not something that each one has said today is going to resonate with each one of you, right? And it's important to Again, I, I don't remember which one, and I think it was a combination of our panelists that said, um, when you go to Google the CRM systems, there's going to be a ton of stuff that's going to come up. So if you can talk to somebody that's really used it, and it's worked, and it's been successful, I mean, that's, that's what being a dot is all about, we always say, right? It's about connection. Love it. I love it. All right, ladies, thank you so much. Let me see if I can not freeze up again. Um, I will, for those of you that might have joined us from the phone today, I will go ahead and save the chat. You know how to get a hold of me. Um, I will email, I can email you the chat if you're interested in that. Um, and then again, this session is recorded. So um, I'm happy to have our panelists. Thank you for your time. You, you ladies were amazing in sharing your tips and I appreciate you all.
and I hope you have a great day. Mindy, put your mailbox so much for having me. Please promote yourself, Mindy, and put your mailbox.